Hi there, my name is Steve Gerhardt and this is the Unagi Observer. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. Uh, last week I did a review on Cyberpunk Edge Runners, and I have finished the series. It's only about 10 episodes long and it is fantastic. If you want to see me rave about it, uh, click on the link down below. It will be down there. Um, or otherwise, just go ahead and go to Netflix and watch it. It is Studio Trigger did an uh, amazing job on this, so please, please, please watch it. All right, so let's talk about this week's video. So as you know, this is, well, it's mostly anime that I talk about here. I also talk about other fandoms, you know, comic books and role playing and gaming and, you know, things of that nature. And um, so today I'm gonna kind of switch a little bit away from, for, actually a lot away from anime today and talk about a uh, local book a bookstore here in Baltimore called Atomic Books and actually I'm going to talk about the swag that I got um, a few days ago from Atomic Books so um, let's go ahead and get started So in prepping for today's video, um, I decided that I'm just going to talk about Atomic Books itself just a little bit because I actually want to devote an entire episode to Atomic Books because I think it merits that and it has a lot of cultural importance here in the city and I think it's just a neat place and I, and I, and I want to talk about it a lot. So uh, so I'm going to concentrate on the swag that I got the other day, the, the just you know cheap stuff that I just arbitrarily grabbed. So. Now that we got that out of the way, let's take a look at the swag. So as I said before, Atomic Books is one of those places where you can buy really expensive things or you can buy really cheap things. And uh, sometimes you'll find things like a box full of CDs that they sell for like a buck a piece. So I bought some CDs. Um, so let's start off with, um, let's see here, Interpol, turn on the bright lights. I've always thought of Interpol as kind of an interesting little band, and I don't really have much of their stuff, so you know I'm, I'm kind of glad to find this for a buck. And um, yeah, oh by the way, I'll be ripping these CDs to to digital format, obviously, but um, it's kind of fun to find these things. Uh, let's see here, the next CD that I want to talk about is Mud Honey. <clears throat> for those of you older punksters and uh, and, and grunge uh, addicts of music, um, you know who Mud Honey is. Mud Honey is a very big influential band for the for the grunge movement. Um, and again, it's one of those things where it's kind of interesting to be able to find something like this for a buck, and to have it and be able to rip the music off of it. Um, like this is something that would be normally I go to the library and get CDs and I'll rip the music off the off the CDs there. But this is kind of hard. You don't really find something like this out there. And this this last one is kind of a guilty pleasure because just just because it's you know it's Beastie Boys, right? <laughs> uh, Hello Nasty, right? And um, you know why not? It's 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 a buck. It has you know all intergalactic on there, um, body moving, uh, three MCs and one DJ. Uh, you know it's just it's just a fun little album. And I figured why not? It's only a dollar. It's only a dollar. All right, so let's go into the uh, zines or zines, however you would like to pronounce it. Um, and also, uh, Atomic Books also sells interesting um, magazines, fan magazines. So this, this one particular fan magazine I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up. I've seen it before in other places, and I've never really actually gotten it. And it's called the world's longest running fanzine, and uh, it's called G Fan, and it's well. I'll just let the cover speak for itself. So, you know, this is all about kaiju, right? And, you know, I, I, I briefly just kind of looked through this. It's newspaper stock on the inside. You know, you can order and buy movies. There's, um, you know, pictures of, of various actors, you know. Um, here you go. Here's, you know, the guy that they're talking about. Um, and it's just a fan magazine about kaiju and just, you know, things related to that. And, uh, it's kind of interesting. I can't wait to read it again. G fan world's longest running fanzine. All right. This next thing is really kind of interesting and I'm glad I, I, I found it. I knew it existed, but I wasn't, um, you know, I wasn't sure you know, if this was something I wanted to buy. Now, 
this is off of the plastallion.com which is a toy merch uh, kind of like a vintage toy um um I don't want to call it an auction house, but it's stuff that you can find information about old toys, vintage toys, uh, things you know. That, like if you're a fan of a particular show or something, this is this is designed to help you find those things. And they make a magazine called Toy Ventures, and so I picked this one up, not because I collect toys. I actually don't. Um, but there will be times when I'll see something that I like that I want, and I'll buy it. Now the reason why I picked this this um, this Toy Ventures magazine up from, from PlaidStallions.com is because on the cover it is the Aquatic Adventures of Marine Boy, which is an anime. Yep, that's Marine Boy and Luna, his his mermaid sidekick. Um, and they talk about in this in this magazine, and, and of course I'm sure you can find it um, you know, online at Plaid Stallions, but all the merch that comes with it, it's really kind of interesting. Um, for example, shoes and flip-flops. Um, yeah, that's that's a thing. So kind of give you an idea, right? Um, so this is perfect for someone like me who doesn't really who doesn't really buy toys, who doesn't really get toys, you know, unless you know that's something I'm interested in, and. Um, this is kind of fun to have to be able to look at, you know, kind of so because I used to watch Marine Boy when I was a kid. So it's kind of fun to see all this merch, merch kind of stuff. Probably not something I would get very often unless it spoke to me like the cover did here. All right. So we'll put that aside. Now, the next thing, batch of things. The next batch of things that I got were um, comic books. Yeah. So they have, uh, you know, a couple you know, long, long form, you know, comic book, uh, boxes that you would have. And one of them said, you know, like five for 25 cents or, you know, like, you know, a handful for a dollar, whatever. So I literally just stood there with the, uh, the pretty lady who gives me food and I just reached my hand in there, grabbed a chunk out and brought, and brought it out without looking at them and, um, and bought them. So I kind of was able to look through them, and there's some interesting ones, there's some duds, and there's a very fun one at the end that I'll show you. And so let's start, and I'm just going to go through these very, very briefly, because uh, there's quite a few of them. By the way, if you hear a weird noise going on in the background, it's because there's a huge storm, and like you can actually see the raindrops, and they look like they're about this big. Um, it's 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 kind of weird. I live on the top floor of my building, so here, let's see if you can listen. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that, but it's like I can't even see the next building over. It's kind of <laughs> that's how hard it's raining. Okay, so anyway, let's look at the comics. Um, so let's start off with from the company that created Ultraman, Red Man. Uh, this is a comic book company called Happy Tank. Is that what this is? This, this company is called? Um, no, Subaya. Suburaya Productions. Okay, so the people who literally did Ultraman. Okay, so this is kind of a... I, I kind of want to know more about it because there's really not any dialogue in here. It's literally just about kaiju on, like, I guess, Kaiju Island. And there's one particular kaiju, this guy. Where Red Man shows up with this, like with this like spear sword kind of thing and just kills that particular monster but the monster always comes back to life and then at the end of it he actually catches the spear and that's the end of the end of the of this of this particular comic um <clears throat> so i'm kind of curious to know more about this guy all right so i'm not going to talk too much about this one because it's actually a bit of a dud but the cover art is well you'll see So for those of you who are longtime comic book fans, you know who Vampirella is. Um, the story on this particular one, which is by Dynamics, um, is an off-brand story, I would say. It's still, I don't know if it's, you would call it canon or not, but it's related to the Vampirella universe, and um, it's, I didn't pay that much, so that's fine. But the cover art's very interesting. All right, so we got another interesting one, and this one came out in, in oh, 
this month, actually. Um, so BBC and Titan Comics got together and are putting together a Doctor Who comic. Um, so this is number four in the series, so obviously I need to know other stuff. But it's Doctor Who, for all you Doctor Who fans. It is your atypical Doctor Who stuff. Um, just, you know, the, the, the comic is based on this Doctor Who, right? This incarnation, this regeneration, or whatever you want to call it. So, interesting story. I'd like to know more, I think. I think I might, I might want to do more. I'm going to save that one towards the end, because that's a really interesting one. Um, here's another dud. Metal Society, made by... Who is, who is this? Metal Society Top Cow Productions. Um, combine uh, robotic overlords with uh, Fight Club, I guess. Um, and that's that's kind of what you got. Art isn't that great. Story's not that interesting. Um, okay, so because I just did a grab grab. Um, <laughs> that means that um, I got doubles of a particular one and so I got two of Spawn's universe okay. and this is from 2021 Image Comics Image Comics. so they do relatively good stuff so these are uh, some different stories about different um, incarnations of Spawn or Spawn like characters uh, art is pretty good it's pretty interesting along with that came Along with that came King Spawn. Again, Image Comics kind of in the same vein. Interesting. If you like Spawn, uh, if you were entranced by that story, I thought it was pretty good. Um, you'll like this. I think you'll like this. If, if that's not really your, your kind of thing, then you should skip that. But I, I, I enjoyed reading this. Now, here's a fun little one. DC Comics. Um, Batman The Adventures Continue Season 2. In the vein of the... Um, cartoon so Paul Dini is of course one of the artists here um, here you go just kind of give you an idea uh, let me find a good good page if that isn't Paul Dini I don't know what it is all right so you know it's off the it's it's off the cartoon it's a fun, I you know the Joker's in this one. You've got um, you, you've got Harley Quinn in this. You know, again, a la the 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 television series, cartoon series. So fun, uh, action packed, um, serious but not serious. Paul Denny, right? So good stuff, good stuff. Now this one um, <clears throat> is kind of interesting because when you open the cover. It actually tells you, if you haven't read the previous issues, you probably shouldn't read this one. And I started reading it a little bit, and I realized that this is the last issue of this series. And it's called The Scumbag. The world's fate rests with the worst person on it. And this is 30th anniversary of Image Comics. So I'm pretty sure that this is the last um, <clears throat> thing of it. Of what little that I read uh, in this in this particular comic, um, I am very much interested, and I'm glad I kind of stopped because I think I know where it's going. But um, if it does, then it's kind of sad. But again, something I think I'm interested in reading. All right, so the last two are very two very 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 interesting ones that I kind of want to actually get into. The first one um, of those is from Aftershock Comics called Dogs of London. And it's number four, issue number four. Um, it's set, obviously, in London. Present time, and the... Um, basically, the story is, is that this aging, kind of fixer gangster kind of guy um, is discovering that his friends who, were, who had died 50 years prior um, are back to life. And out for revenge and that's the you know i'm gonna leave it at that uh because i don't want to spoil it any more than, than than it needs to be and um it is gory a little bit gory uh it, it's it's a little bit rough this is definitely an adult comic um 
in terms of violence. Uh, but it looks very, very interesting. Again, I don't want to talk too much about it. Again, Dogs of London um, Aftershock Comics. That cover should tell you all you need to know. All right, so the last one is a cool one. Um, and I was very, very happy to see this. It's from Dark Horse Comics, and it's Mystery Science Theater 3000, the comic, issue number six. So literally what this is, as if you're a Misty fan, then you know that they take the mo old movies and they, and they, um, and if, uh, if you watch Misty or if you watch Rift Tracks, you know that they do a voiceover as the movie is going on and it's usually very, very funny. So what they do here is that they take old EC comics, right? And they interject, they actually take the art from those comics and they interject themselves into the comics. So you'll see, uh, you'll see, um, you know, Crow and all those guys in there, inside the comic inside the panels and it is just as funny as the tv show is so i am looking forward to getting more of these I, I really do enjoy looking at this um i think it's fun anyway okay so that's that's the comics right there so let's go into i got this thing and it's sealed i haven't opened it yet so i have no idea it's a grab bag what's in the grab bag let us find out what's in the grab bag May contain anything. Rated T plus, I guess teens or older. So open it up. It's got a cardboard backing to it. So you know, you're trying to keep it keep it fresh as it were. So let's see what they got in here. Alright, looks like more comics, I think. So yeah, just the cover sheet. Right? Yep, it looks like comics. All right. Um, more comics. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Um, cardboard backing. Dark Horse Comics cloaked. Interesting art. All right, so there's that. East of West. That is a very interesting cover. Look at that. That is very intriguing. Oh, there's a little bit in there. It says, okay, East of West. I guess this is number 39. From 2018. This is the world. It's not the one we were supposed to have. It's the one we made. We did this. We did it with open eyes and willing hands. We broke it, and there's no putting it back together. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Oh, death. Okay. Death. <laughs> All right, Superman, red and blue. DC Comics. Not familiar with this one. Um... Wow, it's like a fever dream. Um, I'm not sure how to describe this. Later on, we'll, we'll we'll talk more about that one. All right, this one, Bad Kids Press from Bad Kids Press. We have Cheap Tricks. Looks like a Western comic. All right. Bad Kids Press. Okay, definitely a Western story. Not sure what it's about. Okay, we'll have to check that out. It's issue number two. Oh, and look at this from Boom Studios, created by Josh Joss Whedon. Number twelve of yes, Firefly, everyone's favorite incomplete science fiction story. Wow. Okay. Yep, looks like Firefly, all right. So these these I will look at later and do another little, whoops, another little um, swag video based on these comics and let you know how they are, if they are any good. 
Um, and that should wrap up my swag episode of Atomic Books. And like I said, I'm going to actually um, later on do a a, um, a history, not maybe not a history, but a, a, just a video of Atomic Books and something that's interesting and I think that you guys would like. Again, the links will be down for Atomic Books will be down below. Um, I believe there's some online stuff that you can order. Take a look at it. Give them some love. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this swag video. And, and it's something that that uh, I just arbitrarily just wanted to do. And um, again, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.